Once again, it's time for the Team Lift Podcast with your hosts, Brandon Bowie and Roderick McDaniel. Let's go ahead and get right into the show. You know, they can just go fuck themselves, okay? <laughs> heard, heard. They can fuck themselves. <laughs> you really just go start us with that. That's how yeah. we start leading to the show this week. It's what happens. <laughs> Why? What happens when they can go fuck themselves? <laughs> you just go right to fuck on. Man, this is our. This is awesome. It's your boy, Coach, aka Roderick. Brandon's here. We got one of our favorite guests from 2016 back in here with us, man. Woo! He's Donald been, Trump. <laughs> yeah, Yo, yeah. He's the, the Donald <laughs> Trump of our team. Damn guys. <laughs> well, I'm, that means you can just say I laid the shit, and we'll still vote for you. <laughs> That's all it means. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're our guy, um, Mr. Michael Forrester. The beard is back, joining us for this episode. Now this the is Mohawk. We oh, the Mohawk. I do like the Mohawk. Well, I always call you the beard, but then the Mohawk sings. Everybody else calls you the Mohawk. Yeah. Like, hey, right. Hey, you see Mohawk Gamer Mike? tag, Mike the Mohawk. Yeah, man. There's too many mics. I got this for you. Check this out before we get started. This is our show where we're going to go through our year in review, right? Yeah. We put this show off for our yeah. year, but this is our year in review show. And we waited to do this until we got this Mohawk is, Mike here. This is for video games. Okay. This is going to be video. I, I'm going to throw some bonus questions at you two guys oh, tonight. Shit. So, you know, it, I just want to catch you off guard, but it will be some 2016 review questions. Okay. Okay. All right. So, cool. It's going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> before we start, I'm going to say something. That's I just tonight, I watched the Nintendo Switch presentation. I, as a console, as a fan of console gaming, have never been so disappointed in my whole life. <laughs> Damn. You thought it was going to be anything other than disappointing? I did. I mean, realistically, it's from Nintendo. This is the company who thought it was a good idea to limit the number of NES fucking classic consoles being released in the United States to artificially inflate its... Demand. Demand. It, and they've like, done that all the time. It did it with Amiibo. Th- this is the same company system. that's decided it's a good idea to steal money from creators for using any Nintendo material in their videos. Like, they will just come... Flag your shit, take your fucking money. Like Flappy Bird, for yeah. as long as that lived, and then just died out. <laughs> well, man, here's my thing, man. I really thought they were gonna. There were some things they did right. Yeah. And one of the things they did right is they're not region locking the games, so it's not region locked. The other cool thing they did is they're finally gonna have a Nintendo pay for service, okay. kind of like Xbox Live. Yeah. Which they, and they really are gonna try to push the whole thing with online. But when I look at what you're offering me to play online. I'm, I'm going to have a hard time paying you to play Splatoon 2. I mean, I'm it's sorry. just, the, just it's... the opening lineup, though. How did it look as a console? As a console? The whole Switch The whole switch. Okay, idea. the console, as the hardware goes. The hardware is going to be fucking solid. It came from NVIDIA. You, like, they're not, not they Well, hardware-wise, but the whole Switch, but, like... But, but you know how Nintendo is. Well? Nintendo has never... Like, they really push innovation with the hardware. So what they did is they found NVIDIA's hardware, that whole idea, and then they said, how can we make improve this and make it nintendo branded and they they fucking brought it with the console and the hardware but my thing that pisses me off is okay 300 bucks is going to be 299 mm-hmm. all right expected. it's coming out march 3rd mm-hmm. the fucking opening lineup the launch lineup i was like i'm sorry I'm, i can't pay for this it's dog shit i i just okay here's what we're gonna do <clears throat> Maybe I'm being too bitter right now. <laughs> yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Tommy, yeah, from Chainsaw Eight, come to the show. We're gonna do a switch special with just Tommy on here. Ooh, yeah, Major and Tom. We're gonna have him. We're gonna have Major Tom try to sell me on why I should buy a switch because you know he's ready. He so watched. I mean, oh, okay, I watched his Twitch presentation, uh-huh. and I damn near sent him flowers because he looked so sad. Damn, <laughs> he looks sad. I don't. I mean, I'm. Uh, I was going to talk to him about that. I was just going to say, did you get some bad news during the presentation? Because I'm watching you and watching the Switch presentation, and then I keep looking at you, and it just kept looking like somebody. If, okay, here's the thing. I wish we could have got a video of him, his face, and then just play Celine Dion. Near, <coughs> far, wherever you are. I just wish that music. I wanted the music from Titanic to be played because oh he looked God. that sad. <laughs> he looks so fucking sad. And I was like, what is this, wrong? I mean, 
if, if Nintendo wanted to come out and fucking really swing for the fences with this hardware, what they should have done was created emulators for all of their old systems and then just said, okay, Loaded we're going to have up. our online content. You pay us $5 a month and we will give you access to the virtual console right off the bat and you can access all these games for free. And then we'll like alternate which games we want to be free and which games we don't want to be free. And then we can, you know, attach a sale price to them later. So first couple of Mario games for free, you can play Mario Bros. 3 or Mario Bros. 4 or whatever from Nintendo Anything. 64 or the NES or Anything. whatever. It's there. All of it. Just have that on your online service day one. And I guarantee no one would have been fucking sad about that. No, they wouldn't have. But man, they did. Tweet them. I don't know. Nintendo. Nintendo doesn't listen. This is the problem. Oh, I know. Nintendo does what Nintendo does, and, and the whole industry either follows them or says no. And they keep going. <laughs> yeah, and they just keep <laughs> going. I mean, they've got enough operating capital to make it to, like, 2050 almost. <laughs> they could do whatever they want to and still take a loss on every piece of hardware they sell. Yeah. And they would still be fine. Man. You know I can hear your cat. Yeah. Your cat's oh. trying to get liberation. I wonder if that's going to bleed through into the audio, but your cat is like, he really sounds <laughs> like he's on a protest right We're now. We're murdering him in there. Right? <laughs> and then the whole thing There's is... just somebody sawing him in half in the, ki- in the bedroom. <laughs> Slowly. Just, the cat's just mad. He's just like, I just want to be out there with people. Somebody love me. That's what that meow sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I'm, I don't know how to do this, man. I was just, I was just really disappointed. So let's let's just jump off the switch for now. It's, it's just yeah, gonna we're going to save it for the show. We're going to we're. I'm just going to get it. I'm so to, I should have done something. I should have done yoga before I came to the show. Because do we want to we want to go five, two, one, or we want to start with one and go down? Uh, here's what I'll do. We got different categories. I'm some, I'm a, I got categories. I broke this down into uh, categories. Ha, ha. You got categories. I don't have no category. I just have five games. I know. <laughs> Your picks are last. <laughs> you, 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 my, you, my good friend, are going to pick last because I know where you're going to go. Uh, so here's what I what I did is I sent out a list. Okay. Yeah. And so the list basically I said I wanted people to give me their console game of the year, their handheld. They're mobile, and then the favorite game they played this year. That was the question I asked everybody, right? And what I tried to do was get all the guys that were either connected to the show, our, our big listeners, or guys who had been guests. Um, it was a weird year for a lot of people, you know, mm-hmm. because it like uh, Belly, you know, Adrian Oliva, he's he was all over the map. So you know, he had all the consoles, all the handhelds. He was playing on PC, so he was all over the map. It really took him a lot to make his list <laughs> and to narrow it down to four. I, I gave four categories, but he only gave me three games, and I'm gonna have to explain how that worked out. So, <laughs> so, Is one a cross genre? Uh, Probably. No, wait till you hear how he does this. It's really goofy, and, it, and I almost sent him. It's, uh, it's going to be the just like Honey Pop one, two, and three, right? That's what it's going to be. That's somebody's list. Or like, I say. like Honey Pop, <laughs> and then like Heart of Four Boyfriends. Yeah, we we would talk about that. Actually, he did play that <laughs> while we we're on the subject. How he, did I know? He did play that Hot of. Hard to, hard, to, hard to fo- it's it's a uh, pigeon dating simulator. Yeah, it's so like you're a pigeon, pigeon trying to date women, <laughs> dating real women, and it's yeah. like really weird. And there's a crazy twist ending to it. <laughs> there's oh, a God. crazy twist ending to it, and it was like when he showed it to me, he was like, "Dude, it's on PS4 and PC," and I was like, <laughs> "Like, I don't give a I'm shit." I'm not buying this, and he was like, "I will send you the money to play this," and I was like, "Absolutely not." Game I'm of the year. Not <laughs> game, this. game of the year. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you cannot send me enough money to make me play this. And, it, you know, he's the guy that always tries to get me to play weird stuff all the time. But I was just like, no, we're not doing this one. I'm out. So what I was going to do, let's start with you, Brandon, because yours are going to be easy. You were all PC this year. You don't play. I'm, I'm always all PC. Yeah, you don't have a, have you ever it's played a, a game on your here. phone? Uh, I have the Darkest Dungeon on my phone, actually. How much did you play it, though? Not much. I mean, like, if I'm stuck someplace for, like, 30 or 45 minutes and I don't want to look at Reddit, that's what I do. How but, often do you not want to look at Reddit as much as you that, send me for Reddit? I mean, that's all he does. That's the thing. So, <laughs> he sends me yeah, so I don't really many play links for Reddit. So. 
Uh, I, I have played a lot of Leo's Fortune, which is technically a phone game, but I played it in there on my shield. It's mobile. I'd still consider it's that a mobile, mobile game, but it's on a console that hooks up to your television. So, mm, yeah, I, I'd allow it. Yeah, I'd allow it because yeah, that's that's almost one. And then uh, I also have Hotline Miami. That's another one. Ooh, that's a good. Oh, one. that was on PC though. I thought you played that. Yeah, on I played it on PC originally, but I bought another copy of it for my Shield just so I can like fucking. Oh, so a little up. bit on the go. <laughs> okay, nothing Whenever wrong with I feel that. Like okay. It. So let's go ahead and just get your five. Your five for 2016. What were they? Uh, so five. Let's see. Arizona Sunshine, Raw Data, um, Doom Raw data 2016. I wanted to put Dishonored on this list, but I can't because it's too technically fucked up and I hate it. Damn. We, we have a show about that. Yeah. We actually discussed how disappointed you were in that in 2016. Yeah. And I don't remember the show, but I just remember you being very upset about that. Um, so what else did you have? Uh, let me go look at my list of games real quick. Oh, Overwatch. Yeah, I was going to say, I know of course. what was missing. Yeah. Because we agree on that. Yeah. And then, what was the other one? It's technically not a game, but um, it's for VR. It does have games and stuff in it, but it's more of a social like meeting place. It's called Alt Space VR. So like I've gone in there and spent hours playing like uh, Cards Against Humanity with people over the internet in that's, VR. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like it's it's fucking awesome. Like uh, the way that it does it. There's a this like big table in the center, and then it's got a holographic projector above it, and so when the cards are chosen, they just show up as a big holographic projection that everybody can see. Nice. Um, okay, wait a minute. So raw data. Yeah. Overwatch. Arizona Sunshine. Yeah. What the hell is Arizona Sunshine? It's a a, a VR zombie shooter game. Okay. Um, it's it's like a shooting gallery, but you actually you know you can teleport around inside of it, and it has a full single player campaign that's fully voiced. That's four hours long, so like you travel from one from this place that uh, presumably you've been staying for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you start traveling out to go get supplies, and you run across a radio, and that radio has a radio broadcast that's like, "Come to X Y Z, we are will save you." Um. And so you start on that journey to go there, and then at the they're end, they're probably evil. Like, let's be real. Well, the, it ends. You gotta on do something fucked up to get saved. But that's the thing: is it ends on a po positive note. Like, if you play all the way through it, at the end, major spoilers here, but probably people aren't even going to be able to play this game realistically for a while. But um, you get all the way to the end, you find the radio, you broadcast to them, and they send a chopper to come pick you up. And, like, the the end boss is just, like, them dumping a couple hundred zombies at once on you. And you just having a whole table full of guns to just mow them down with. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a pretty fun game. I mean, I, I really liked it a lot. And okay. the story is great. Like, the fucking, the main character, well, you are the main character, but the, the voiced actor, he, he just talks to the zombies because he doesn't have anybody else to talk to. And he's just a cynical asshole. And he calls all the zombies Fred. They're all Fred. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's it's great. You have to play it. Like, I, if okay, you want, so let's hit that. I can so hook it up Raw later. Data, yeah, Arizona Sunshine. Yeah, Overwatch. What was number four? Uh, number one is Doom 2016. I didn't put them in any particular order, but Doom is the number one. All the rest of them are fine. New Doom um, is crazy. So that was your favorite game, also. This yeah, year. Doom 2016. There's no other fucking game that I could nominate for Game of the Year. That game does everything that it needs to do, and it does it fucking three hundred percent. Damn! Like they nailed it. Like the if I don't know if you've watched the no clip documentaries um, that they put out. They they interviewed uh, three of the guys from ID, um, and they just kind of they're like you know if if we tell you exactly how far away from launch everything actually came together and you know we got the game together and and shipped you would think we were irresponsible <laughs> <laughs> because like they they had 
they had all these elements, but they didn't have a way to tie them together and they didn't have a way to tie them to the story. And then eventually they just realized that it was um, a matter of just making the main character just you're fucking amazing. You are like you are the devastation. And then once they had that piece in there, then kind of everything just fell into place. Damn. That's awesome. So that's still on the four. Raw Data, Arizona Sunshine, Overwatch, Doom 2016. And Alt Space. So you are wanting to use Alt Space, even yeah. though technically. I mean, Alt Space yeah. is, uh, it is a place where it's just a meeting place, but it is also games. They have like Frisbee Golf and, and like a maze that you can go to. Like a I mean, so it's more maze. of like a VR experience than a, yeah. than a game, but still. Yeah. But you can play board games in it. Like you can, they, they actually, during the presidential debates and stuff, they had a debate, an, an expert on, or experts from both sides in there explaining what was going on in the debate and talking about those things in greater detail damn which is awesome and then they've had like concerts and stuff in there for free and That's the whole thing is free you just log in and play so reggie watts has done concerts in there there's been of a course few he has. comedians who've done stand-up in there too oh really yeah i mean you can actually go to the alt space site and you can sign in and create a calendar event and then put on that event in that venue so you could set up a comedy show if you wanted to in VR. Come over here and just do it in my vibe. That would be pretty badass, <laughs> bro. People would not be ready for what I would talk about. Well, I, I think, <laughs> dude, they're on the. They're basically like jacked into the internet. I think they'd be perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. but I would. I would even. I would. I would it's weird because you know when you do stand up comedy, yeah. you're performing and you get a feedback from your audience. You well, know you, what I'm you'll be able to see your audience. But I wouldn't like hear action. my audience necessarily. Yeah, you would. They all have microphones. So I would hear them. So if they were laughing, I would actually hear the laughs coming back. Yeah. I'm, Dude, I think I'm you should try it. I'm not saying I would do it. I'm just saying I'm interested. I think you That's, should try it. That'd be cool as fuck. Yeah. I've been to I've been to DJ concerts in that thing. I've been to... How do uh, you see like the other people? What, like, in, like Everybody gets to choose their or? own avatar. Oh, okay. So they have like a selection of like they have a default man, a default woman, and then they've got like a couple of robot ones, and then they've got like a silly robot ones. So some of them look like sci-fi, like helper made robot kind of things, <laughs> and then they have these other ones that are just silly, like they're kind of like look like they were cobbled together in somebody's garage. Hmm. Okay, I'm interested in that. I'll, I'll put that down. So we got for Brandon raw data, Arizona sunshine, Overwatch. Alt Space, Doom 2016, and Doom 2016, favorite game of the year. Yeah, that's, that's game of the year. All right, cool, cool. That's that's not a bad list. And I spent some time in Raw Data. Mm-hmm. I, I played that. Me it too. kind of fucked me up. That was hilarious. That game is great, though. There was a video of me screaming like a little bitch because a, a robot walked up behind me. And, and you turned around and it was it, just like right there. And I turned around and the face was there and I screamed like that a little amazing. girl in a just... <laughs> concert. And I was pissed off. Uh, Mohawk Mike. Dude, I don't know if I have a particular order either. Okay. Um, unlike whoever you were talking about that played like everything last year. Yeah. Uh, I did substantially less gaming than I would have liked last year. Okay. That, uh, that's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, my selection's a little more, uh, slim. I have to say I played the shit out of uh the division tom clancy's the division okay cool 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 that one was really fun uh, especially grouped up with people but it felt very repetitive like you'd run around assault the base get the thing take it somewhere like you know just over and over and over again but with better guns better gear and harder enemies and the dead zone was cool it was like the pvp area but everybody just kind of like slowly fell out of it but it was really badass it was well done it was really fun what did you play that on PS4. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, I'm all I'm all console. I would love a PC, but I'm no, trying to get you to build one. No time. Or, listen to me. No time or money. <laughs> wouldn't listen to me. I understand that yeah. all too well. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm making time and I'm saving money for one in 2017. I've made the promise, but yeah, I totally get where you were on that one. Um, Mirror's Edge Two. Ooh, nice. That was another one. Uh, that was just really fun, and it's also like about damn time. Let's be real. Uh, I like the whole free running ass kicking. That's it's always it's just cool and playing on a big enough TV. I bet it'd be great in VR, um, but I bet it would be a vomit coaster in yeah, VR. Yeah, I was like you, just just saying like in the, on the TV alone. Like there are definitely moments where you're like, oh shit! Like, yeah, it just makes you feel how high you are on that building, 
as that free runner, just the way it's done. It was really well done. You know, I still haven't played that. Dude, it's yeah. good. They gave me a free copy, and I've never loaded it in. Yeah, Damn. It's okay. Never loaded it in. I just most of my free copies of my games just go onto my account, and then eventually I'll get to them. So yeah, that's I don't feel too bad about kind of, it. I think it's on my shelf, still staring at me in the plastic. I need to. I probably need to try. Oh, to speaking of which, a uh, small kind of ish announcement. I have two copies of Marriage Catalyst for PC, so I have just the codes. So we should do something with those. Give them I away. I think we may do something with that. We may set up a giveaway. Okay. All right. Cool. That. Anyway, thing. thanks for putting that out there. We <laughs> now people are hearing that and they're going, "Wait, these fools say free codes? Yeah, we did. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what else did you hit us with? You got the division and Mirror's Edge two. What else? Um, definitely Overwatch. Played the shit out of Overwatch. Not on PC. It's definitely different. I've played on both, but I primarily PS4. So I know your whole crew was playing Overwatch on PS4. Yeah, absolutely. Because we know Ben, Shelby, you. I think was Seymour, Ashley. Yeah, I mean everybody. that whole crew. Bon Tempe in there for a minute too. Yeah, your whole crew was deep on that PS4. Like yeah, everybody. Fun. It was so weird to me because, like, I'd be looking in there and I'd be like, I think I know all these people. Because I did. think Ash is with, I think she's Lemony Ash or something crazy. Yeah. And I always saw Overwatch. Yeah. Overwatch. And I was like, dang, that whole crew is locked into that game. Still haven't played it. I honestly can tell you I've never launched that game either. So I'm, I'm kind of jacked up this year. There are going to be some titles in mind that are going to be really different than everybody else. No, I, I can tell already. Okay. <laughs> How many am I? Is that three or four? You are. That's three, bro. Okay. I'm going to throw it out to Paragon then. Paragon's free to play. It's on PC and PS4. Oh, we're uh, talking about Overwatch with horses? No. No? It oh, that's a, Paladins. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Paladins. not Paladins. Yeah. No, Paragon was a... No, the problem with Paragon is it came out before Overwatch... No, not was, not Battleborn. No, that it was the MOBA. It's yeah. another MOBA, and I remember it on the Dude, PS4. But like you could get it for free, and I think you could upgrade for twenty bucks to the. Yep, and uh, so it's also on PC, and it's cross platform. So I like you can play PS like people on PC can play with people on PS4. Oh Lord, we're just getting which is nice. Kicked. Uh, it's super hot. No, not really. I mean, it's balanced really. Oh, well. it's from Epic. Yeah, it's Why didn't dude. You see that? Fucking, I don't know. I've played. I play, and Bro. it looks. It looks really, really clean. You said you hated MOBAs. It's a. It's a MOBA, but it's badass. And but it's. It's from Epic, so I might try it. Okay, you, sh <laughs> you should. And like, they. You don't understand. Like I've been playing Epic games since like Unreal came out. No, like, I, since that, Jack I, Jazz totally Jackrabbit that, was a thing. I, like the thing is, is that this is one of those games that when people say it to me. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked. Like uh, it shocks me to hear it because, but it's, it seems almost like an underground favorite, dude. It's like the the people that play yeah. it are dedicated, to and it's it. so good. Like the character design is phenomenal. It looks amazing. They just actually did a huge overhaul update, and they basically they reduced everyone's cooldowns and they upped everyone's movement speed. They had like two different movement speeds at first. If you were if you were moving unhit or like, you know, avoiding things after a certain amount of time, you would start sprinting. Now that's that's gone away, but it just and the way they brought everyone's cooldowns, made the map a little bit smaller, it plays way quicker. Like matches, there was times we'd play a match and get it done in like 20 minutes. And then there was times where you sign in for a game and you play for like 45 minutes to an hour. So it's just such like a struggle. And they tried to fix that with the overhaul. And it's, I mean, it almost made it a completely different game with the same characters. I it's a lot faster it all over like again. Overwatch is where your games are like five or six minutes instead no, of like half an hour. There's, yeah, I mean, there's still, there's still probably like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, but yeah, it, it's a better time investment. Yes. It's, it didn't feel as, burdened when i would play a match now after that huge update but yeah it's really know. really good this is probably my game of the year wow throw really? oh yeah it's i don't like mobas like i don't really play mobas a whole lot and i i, I always suck at them but this one is just it drew my attention and it held on to it i still like it dude you kind of shocked me with that one mm -hmm. uh that puts you at four that was four did you have one on mobile that you liked um, I will go through mobile games like no tomorrow. Like yeah. I'll play them for a little bit and the ones I really like, I'll keep around and like just slowly dwindle out of it. And then I'll also like download games and then I hate it and I delete it like the same day, same hour. I um, totally get that. Okay. Totally get that. But, uh, the other one I'm going to say is Far Cry Primal. 
Bro, how was that? It's it's awesome. Uh, me and Seymour played a shit ton of it in in the man cave in the garage, and uh, I mean, as do, you do, you know the uh, the map for that game? They literally just copied and pasted it from the last Far Cry game. Like I didn't you can, know that. Uh, like they people posted uh, comparison photos of them, and they like overlaid them on top of each other. The rivers and the mountains and all that other shit yeah. is all in exactly the same place. They just added more stuff, uh, like added more overgrowth to it to make it look wild and removed all the buildings. Interesting. That, I didn't know that. That's actually kind of cool, though, because you were a Stone Age game. Yeah, yeah but and it's, it's also like they're charging $60 for a game that they just copied and pasted from the last game. The map. I mean, I, I didn't really play the other one, but it's badass. I mean, you're running around. You're like a little like caveman bro. You, mm -hmm. can, tame, you can tame animals that will help yeah. you in different situations. Um, and you have to take over. You know, there's like bases and stuff or like outposts. Um, and to take them over, you have to go kill everybody. So you could like, if you have your like wolf buddy, you just run in and like beat some ass or you could stealthily do everything. Like your owl could kill people or drop like poison bombs or bees. Um, bees. and what Colin and I like to do is run around with a big old two handed mace. So you have a bunch of weapons that you can slowly upgrade for different scenarios, mm -hmm. but that one, just get like a full sprint going through the wilderness, come across a bad guy randomly, and just molly -wop them. They, they ragdolled, and that was fun. Oh, dang, um, dude. But yeah, it's cool. I like that whole era, and they did well on that. Okay. Okay, man, that's actually one. really cool, man. I like that, man. Your list was interesting. I'll tell. Okay, speaking of interesting lists... Because you may want to add something to this. Because mm -hmm. you may think of something else. But I'm going to tell you who brought the interest in this. Major Tom. Tommy hit me with this, okay? Not surprised. Mm -hmm. Now, his list was... Uh, his list was a little bit different. So, his console game of the year mm -hmm. was The Last Guardian on the PS4. Man, I haven't played that. He is in love with that game. I heard it's amazing. And it, he was emotionally tied no. to it. It kind of got him. His handheld game of the year was the Dragon Quest Builders for the Vita. He did it on the Vita. I remember when he got it. It was basically Minecraft with some really cool improvements and, you know, kind of putting the Dragon Quest skin on it. Yep. Uh, he really fell in love with that one. His mobile game of the year, he told me, was Super Mario Run. Man, that's iPhone only. I would love it. Yeah, he really he chunked <laughs> down some time into that one. Uh, but then when I asked him, favorite game you played this year? He said that was where it got tough. And what he did is he broke it down and he said, hey, here were some standout moments, which I think is a brilliant idea. There were some games that I played, and I can't, say, I can't say it was maybe my favorite game of the year, but it really stood out and was a standout moment. Mm -hmm. And one of them, I'm going to just go head through the list because uh, two of them he's going to name here are also on my list. So Until Dawn which was the PS4 exclusive, which was the horror game, mm, yep. which was a really great game. Is that the one where you switch off between the different characters? Yeah, and you're, it's like a teenage slasher flick. Yeah, so I, we never ended up doing it, but a bunch of us had discussed like having a night where you we get a bunch of people together and everyone's designated to a character or multiple characters depending on how many people you have and basically like when that person's time is like on the screen, you're making decisions for them, like you are making one guy's and I am making someone else's decisions and so on. So basically have just like a party where you play through that game with a group of friends and everyone's that playing a different character. That is a brilliant freaking idea yeah. and it could totally work. I feel like it'd be fun. The end, the end, it does. It's decision based. So mm -hmm. what you do, I could make... Okay, there's the thing. To platinum that game, mm -hmm. you had to finish the game with everybody alive. Oh shit. And... It's not that easy to uh, do. Obviously. And then I, I did that. I nice. got the Platinum for it this year. So I finished the game, my first playthrough with everybody alive. Dang. So then when I went back through the second time, it was more fun because I got to do just all the dumb shit and watch them die these horrible deaths. <laughs> and it See, was like... and that's the other thing, too, is if you're tied to a character, like, I mean, you've played it, so you might know a certain scenario that comes up. But, like, I could just fuck up and get Brandon killed. There and then is. he's out and for the really night. really what it does to See? you. It's like he could make a decision with his character and it would <laughs> fuck your character. I feel like that would be like really fun just like party night, basically. And if you take a bunch of people into it that don't know what they're getting, it's really a lot of fun. Because what I found out when I played it and, I, and I've talked to people about it is the first time I played through and I told everybody, yeah, I finished my first playthrough and I kept everybody alive. And people looked at me 
like I was a fucking unicorn because they were like, how did you do it? And I said, I played it like I would have did it in real life. And I found out something as crazy as I am. I am real fucking skeptical when it gets to sketchy shit. <laughs> I overthink everything and overthinking everything in this game kept everybody alive. So there, there's a, uh, um, a game called werewolf. I don't know if you ever played it. Uh-uh. It's a, uh, um, it's not an RPG. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it is an RPG, but it's not like an RPG in the sense where you like gain levels and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like uh, a Dungeons and Dragons. Like everybody sits around the table and plays. Mm-hmm. Um, but one person is the werewolf and then everybody else is not the werewolf. And those people have to try to figure out who the werewolf is. Ooh. So uh, a company put together a VR game that's based on that game. Nice. Oh shit! So you can sit around like a virtual campfire, and someone's the 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 werewolf, and the other people are not, and you have to try to figure out who it is. It sounds a lot like what you could do with that game, where you could screw people over because <laughs> the whole group has to decide who to kill, and if it's not the van- if it's not the werewolf, they all fucking die. <laughs> you could, yeah, no, there's some shit you could do in yeah. there, and it fucked people. And I was just like, to, I was, I loved it. I really had a blast with that game. There's a lot of multiplayer games recently that are taking that like however many versus one approach. Oh yeah. There's like it didn't get a whole lot of attention, which I played a little bit of Evolve. I think it came out in twenty fifteen. It was. Yeah, yeah, it was the one where they re released like, it in twenty sixteen as a free game. So I like, might have to check that out. Then. Uh, I think it's it was being, just good. I it was, think it's being shut down actually. Oh man. I like the concept. I just don't think it got the attention. What was that well, it, it's not a matter on PC that's it's not a matter of attention with that game. It's a matter of fuckery. Uh, so the studio uh, put that game out for $60 and then made parts of it that you had to buy for DLC for no fucking reason. Like, their whole business model was just fucked. Yeah. That was really the problem with that game. And so a lot of people who wanted to play it, they bought it, but they didn't want to invest all the extra money. And then a lot of other people were just like, well, fuck this game. Like, it, it's not complete unless I buy all the DLC. Why am I going to play it? So their yeah. player base just tanked. Yeah. Well, the one being worked on, the Friday the 13th one, where like you're playing the camp counselors or one person's playing Jason. Yeah, have that's you played PC, but it's already a game like it. To, have you played Dead by Daylight? That's it. No. Dead by Daylight is the, exactly the same game, except like they've expanded the concept, so you actually have multiple bad guys and each one of those bad guys has their own set of things uh, their own unique power set nice and then all of the camp counselors have their own powers depending on which one you choose and you can like awareness or certain things yeah like like that and all of it can be upgraded um as you play through you earn currency and use that currency to buy things what's that called uh, Dead by Daylight, and I think it's, it's been, been out. Of, I've heard of that. It's been out for a while, and it's a lot more polished than the Jason game is. Oh yeah, I mean, but, I've yeah, seen it. It, but here's the thing: didn't they just add Michael Myers into their Dead by Daylight? They yeah, added a big movie. They did. I think it was Killer. Michael Myers. Yeah, which I thought was kind of shitty because you know Friday the Thirteenth had their big reveal, yeah. and it looked good. Like I watched the whole stream of it, and I thought, hey, you know, for this to be in beta. That looks really oh, good. Oh, yeah. And, and I was really hyped. And I, but I was aware of Dead by Daylight. I hadn't played it yet. But uh, you I and bought I were it on talking a lark. about it. You yeah. were trying to get me to play it. I bought it on a lark. It was like on sale for like 15 bucks, And it's normally like, I think, 29 So I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll give it a whirl. I, I played it for you know a few hours. I really liked it. I just uh, I fell out of it pretty quickly because... Um, I don't know. I just there was other shit that I was trying yeah. to play. Like Overwatch was out at the same time, so I was like Dude, Overwatch switching back. It just it, crushed man. fucking everything this year. Battleborn was essentially no. Battleborn was not anything like Overwatch, but it was no. I was gonna say it was essentially just like completely overshadowed. Yeah, it was, because it was of and what it came out a week before Overwatch. No, uh, it came out two months before Overwatch. <laughs> really. Yeah, when we went to E3, two. we played Battleborn, and dude, that game is the shit. Like, I wish I need to put time into it. I'd love to buy it and play it because it had a great. I mean, the story seemed really interesting. Uh, same people that do um, Borderlands, so okay. I mean, like you, you, you know the it? yeah, you know yeah. yeah. So you know the the game's gonna be polished. It's gonna be fun. They had an interesting concept, and the multiplayer rounds we played. I mean, it was awesome. It was badass. But it just got. Completely overshadowed. The problem was that their marketing team didn't know what the fuck they were doing. If if their marketing team would have smart, they would have never launched in your Overwatch, and they would have actually put out commercials and um and funded you people never to play saw the game. Any advertisement for that game. 
Well, that that was the problem is like they didn't they didn't advertise properly, and they didn't advertise that this game is not like Overwatch at all. It, if you all, if you like watch the trailers for them because they're so like character driven, they come off very similar. Oh, yeah. That's sucks. Instead but if of you play the, them both, they're very very different. Like Overwatch doesn't even have a story mode. It is. I mean, there is a lot of story and lore to it. But you have to invest time to learn all of that, and like the gameplay is all multiplayer. Battleborn, like you can play through with friends or by yourself, and they have like a campaign that you play through with people oh, wow. or by yeah, yourself. Yeah, and there's like and actual they have multiplayer. There's actual like the the map. Uh, the maps are play more like a MOBA than they do play like uh, a first person shooter, okay. like Overwatch. So instead of it being like you know capture the area or capture the flag or push the cart or something like along those lines you're actually having to do things to be able to like push into their um base versus having them push into your base and like there are these little uh pve uh bot control things that that pop out just like they do in a mobo where they just walk up and start attacking things mm -hmm. and you have to use those i think as like a resource to be able to to do things and you're, there's also a leveling system, and you're choosing talents while you're playing the game. Yeah, like it's yeah. a completely different game. It is definitely not Overwatch, but their marketing was just retarded. You like, guys both have said really positive. Dude, like as a guy who didn't it. touch it, I'm kind of just listening to both of you. Yeah. I'm like I really kind of want to play that. It's badass, yeah. man. It it was fun. It yeah. just. Got and there no were attention. there were a lot of people who liked it. Like there were a lot of streamers, like Total Biscuit and and his crew that are on fucking the Co Optional podcast. They all love that game. They played the shit out of it. Yeah, I mean, and as popular as they are, they still were not able to generate enough hype for the game to have it do anything because of Overwatch. That's yeah, sad. they should have they should have held off six months or a year, finished you know tuning the mechanics in that game, and then released it. And I think it all came down to two K was like. You need to put this fucking game out because we want our goddamn money back. And now 2K, it looks like they're divesting from um, Gearbox, which is... I, I have a feeling Gearbox is going to be gone by the end of this year. Which sucks. It sucks, but it doesn't suck. I mean, they yeah. have a really shitty run of, of games. The only game that they have that's, that's come out that's been super popular is Borderlands. And yeah. they've rammed that into the ground. And then but this I, game sucked, and it did, it, but it Aliens Colonial it Marines suck. sucked. Like, the game itself was I know, the great. game itself like, didn't the team, suck, but... And, like, coming from that background, man, like, what they put into that game, what that game is, it is a good game. It just did not get the attention. See, like, there's another game that's like, Bor uh, that's like Overwatch and that's like Battleborn from Bethesda that Bethesda showed off la uh, last year when they, when they showed off um, uh, what game was Fallout it? 4 for the first time. Uh, something battle some shit. I don't even know. It's all the game seems like it's almost been virtually canceled since then because Damn. it was going to come out at the same time that Overwatch was coming out. And I think Bethesda was smart enough to go, this market is saturated. Either we need to close this project down or we need to retool it or we need to wait and release it. So it's never come out. Yeah. And there was so little marketing and so little hype behind it that I don't even remember what the fuck the name of it was. Yeah, but so I have many, a shitty memory. So to many begin titles with. turn into vaporware like. But that. yeah, well, okay. Overwatch just melted everything, man. Well, okay, let me finish out the rest of oh, this. Yeah. Overwatch was fucking diva. He hit uh, the, this one. He names this one, and I really love this game because I, uh, I just platinum did also on the PS4. Damn, uh, Life is Strange. It, I. Life is Strange was to me it, it was it was a great kind of like heavy rain kind of mm -hmm. game you know so it had this it had this story about time time manipulation okay um, I don't think I ever played and this that. girl that was kind of figuring out and there was a murder mystery so it was kind of like <clears throat> Twin Peaks and nine oh two one oh with time <laughs> manipulation huh and it was uh I mean it was a really just weird kind of creepy murder mystery going on the whole time um. I mean, it was really good. One that you'd probably like, which I think uh, the only reason I got it was, uh, or played it, was Nick, uh, Mr. Valdezzi. Mm -hmm. uh, he had come over with his Xbox, and we were going to play some Halo, but it needed to update. One of the free games that he got was like, it was, I think it was called Murdered Soul Suspect. Yes, that was Square Enix. Who yeah, published when that, you, I remember. and it, it was a free game on, on Xbox One. Um, and I played it for a, a while. I was waiting for it to update or whatnot. I played it for several hours. Like, that game was really cool. Like, you're a ghost trying to, like, 
track down some people involved in your murder. Yeah. When you go to crime scenes and stuff, like you take over a body and yeah, I saw that whole thing. It's and it, pretty. Crazy. It really looked neat. I I I actually have it on my system. I have not played it yet. If you, if you like those, like that murder, like that. Murder mystery, murder mystery type yeah. thing, yeah, and it, it's it looks good too. Yeah, and I'm gonna take then another one. Tommy brings this one out. This one here was interesting mm -hmm. because I saw this on a lot of people on PC. This was a PC hit, man. Firewatch, and a lot of people were familiar with that. It was really a single player story where this guy was a uh, a park ranger, hmm. and as he was this park ranger, and, and his only connection to another person was his radio. Huh. Uh, a lot of great stories about it. A lot of good reviews about it. Um, I even think it was one of the big games that was talked about on uh, on Steam for a while. Huh. Like a lot of good positive reviews on Steam. Tommy really enjoyed that one. Your game, Far Cry Primal. He said that was one of his standouts. Dude, it was. It was just fun. It was a fun game. Yeah, he he really enjoyed it. This one here, I know, was an Xbox One exclusive. Uh, I kind of wanted to play it, but I never did pick it up yet. Quantum Break. Yeah, I saw that one. Uh, it looked interesting, but I never never played it again. Quantum Break looked like a pile of dog shit. You didn't like it, huh? Uh, from everything that I've seen of it, it's like five or ten minutes worth of gameplay interspersed with fucking 20 to 30 minute episodes of a show that was supposed to go on with the game. Yeah. And then on Windows, it was a complete mess. Like, they only released it on the Windows Store, and the game wouldn't work properly and then they eventually fixed it and re-released it on steam like several months later like the only way to be able to get the videos on the pc was to watch them streaming so you couldn't actually even install the whole game you could only install the game parts that you were actually playing through the cinematic stuff the like full episodes which that's kind of a jarring stupid thing to do in a game to go from game graphics to real actors acting in scenes and then going back to the game like what is this the full motion fucking video era are we in the <laughs> 90s now this is a dumb idea this is yeah. a dumb idea i didn't i didn't mess with it then i have an xbox one so but, yeah same i mean the pedigree is there like it's from the people who made max Payne one and two and who made like uh, Did they do Alan, Alan Wake? Wake. Yeah, yeah. Alan Wake was a beast. I mean, Remedy Remedy Entertainment is a good studio. I just think that this was a concept that was better off not being executed. Can I be honest with you? The first problem is when you try to go Windows Store on. Yeah. yeah, that's the I first mean. problem. Had they just came out on Steam without that issue, and I understand Microsoft is trying to compete. Give up. Microsoft isn't trying to compete. Microsoft is trying to take over. Yeah, they want to make it where you have they, to they, use their They want to switch product. everything over to UWP, which is Universal Windows Platform, instead of executable files like they are now. And then once everything is UWP, it has to be rammed through the Microsoft Store in order to work, which means that they can edge out Steam and Origin and Green Man Gaming and all the other sites out there because you have to go to Microsoft. So they want to, they want to do that so then they can move compatibility through all their devices. Yeah, I mean, the compatibility through all the devices can be achieved without them fucking over all of their competitors. True. Yeah, but has Microsoft has always been about fucking over their competitors. I guess. I'm just saying. <laughs> just basing it on history. Anyway. All right, let's get back off. Oh, here. that game earlier that I was talking about is Battle Cry. And Battle it, Cry. It looks like it has been completely suspended by Bethesda. Like, they are no longer... They are evaluating the Yeah, that's the game. vaporware now. Yeah, it's fucked. It's not coming out. Uh, Tommy hit me with these. He's got like five more games. These are really interesting where he goes. Attack on Titan was the PS4 game. That mm -hmm. was a PS4 exclusive. Uh, Gears of War 4, which... I play that. Yeah, did you? No, I need to. He People hit... have said that that game is fucking amazing on the PC, but I That's refuse... That's what I've heard. I refuse to use the Windows Store to get it. I've heard nothing but great <laughs> stuff, man. But I have not touched it. Me neither. Uh, this one's one that... You guys are going to know how I feel about this one. Battlefield 1, as a veteran, those fucking stories. First of all, brav the fucking O to you. and the, Whoever wrote that game, those those individual story chapters were amazing. Mm -hmm. And that the first one, uh, Blood and Mud, the tank story, bro, got in my fucking emotions. Oh, yeah, man. And I'm a vet. And so as a vet, 
I, I tried not to get into a lot of shooters that, you know, where the story gets, you know, takes me back to that place. Gets too real. Dude, yeah, I, mean, they I, I like you. playing most shooters like Call of Duty, and I go, this shit's not real, fuck it. But that one got into my emotions because it really played on that brotherhood that oh, you yeah. go through in a war situation. Well, I mean, the, and they set you up, too. Like, right in the beginning, like the tutorial, just to get used to everything. They, yeah. I mean, they start you off, like, one of the first things it says is, like, these are frontline scenes. You're... You're not expected, you're not expected to, survive. to survive, and I mean, it gets it kind of comes down to skill, probably. But I mean, it just gets progressively harder until you die, and then it moves on, so it can teach you something else. But those, like, it felt like a struggle just to get through the Bro, tutorial. I mean, that was the closest I've ever come to see. Not since Medal of Honor, Pacific Assault, where we get the whole fucking scene from, like, you know, Saving Private Ryan, where we're mm -hmm. doing the beach landing, and it's just a bitch. I have not been in a war game that was like that in a long time. Battlefield 1 took me to some places. Yeah, they nailed it, man. It was good. It took, and I was playing on the big screen in my room, and I got a little too immersed in it. And it was just like, there was one point I was just like, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm going to finish this chapter. When it finished, I seriously <coughs> did the save, turned that bitch off for about four days. And I think I watched anime. I had to walk. <laughs> As a vet, I kind of, I, sometimes, I, and I've talked to other vets about it. You know, working at the company, it was kind of neat to talk to other vets on the phone when they would call in. And, and you know, this conversation would swing around. Yeah, I'm a vet. And I said, oh, my God, I'm a vet. And, you know, I served on the Tripoli combat action here, saw this. And then we'll get to talking. So vets have a different talk. Of it. We have a different conversation when it comes to that game. I can tell you right now, vets are fucked up by certain games. And EA made both of those games. Yeah. The first Medal of Honor has... Uh, it was amazing, but there is a part in Warfighter where you're on, it's you and your team, and uh, the Kurt, you know, you're kind of in this like Iraqi situation, and the radicals are coming down on you from the hill, and they're rushing on your little base, yeah. but it's all for you, and you radio out and say, man, look, I don't think we're going to make it, just tell our families we loved them. Ooh. Bro, that scene got to me, and I served in Desert Storm, so, and I was an uh, operation specialist, so I'm the guy that... If you would radio in that message in, I probably would have heard that message. Damn. And that was that was kind of a game of when it when they do that in the game, I was like, okay, you got into my emotions a little bit. And there was another one where I had to stop it after I finished it and walk away from the game and say, yeah, I'm taking a break from this one. Damn. That was a little too much for me. Um, and Battlefield One did that, man. Battlefield One brought it with that, man. It was a good game. Uh, he hit me with another one, man. This I'm gonna kind of get these. He hit uh, Inside, and Inside, I think, was the game from, I think they did the other game with the, uh, oh, I can't think of it now, man. It's going to bug the piss out of me. They did another game that was kind of like that. It was a black and white game, and it was all oh, Limbo. That's it, man. Yeah, Limbo was amazing. That was, I mean, that's a few years back now. Yeah, but well, these guys, uh, Play Dead, the company that did that one, mm -hmm. they did this game, and I think it it was like a timed exclusive, like it went Xbox One and Windows first, and then they brought it to the PS4. I'm going to have to look for that. And here's what I'm going to tell you. This is what's so crazy. On Steam, um, IGN gave the game a masterpiece 10 out of 10 rating. Wow. And, and that was enough for me to kind of go, um, whoa, okay, you know, you really... Here's this. I pulled this from Steam just to kind of set this for you. It's reviews. 95% of the 1,291 user reviews in the last 30 days are positive. Damn. Out overwhelmingly positive. Uh, then the overall score, that was the recent score. Overall, 95% of the 8,952 user reviews for this game are positive. Damn. And it was one of the highest rated games that you'll probably see that came out. Um, and, and here's the thing. It stayed that way on most things. Uh, Polygon gave it a 9.5 out of 10. Giant Bomb gave it a 5 out of 5. IGN called it a masterpiece. Inside is a 2D puzzle platformer that builds upon what made Limbo great. And in fact, builds something greater. 10 out of 10. Um man if that don't hype you up to play that shit <laughs> I don't know, right. I don't know whatever will at this point um 
Thanks for listening to the Team Lift Podcast with your hosts, Brandon Bowie and Roderick McDaniel. Join us again next week as we discuss more topics from geek culture. Be sure to follow us on our Twitter page, at GoTeamLift, as well as our personal pages, at Coach Silky and at Thyside. You can direct questions and comments to us on our Twitter page, as well as find links to all of our social media outlets. Thank you for listening. See you again next week.